What is going on you guys? Welcome back to the channel. If I'm talking a little too loud or not loud enough, sorry. I have my earplugs on for once in my life. Like I'm losing my hearing. <laughs> my bikes are way too loud. You guys can't even like tell through the videos, but like it's like really, really painful for the ear, especially because I ride almost every day or every other day uh, at least. You know, there's a lot of wind noise and whatnot. So yeah. I'm, I do a lot of riding and uh, I have noticed that my hearing has gotten worse literally so like when I take those breaks to go like party or rave or festivals and whatnot even though like those events you're supposed to wear earplugs because the music is so loud when I come back I feel like I can hear better because I haven't been riding for a few days it's crazy I also got like tinnitus from riding which if you guys don't know it's like a thing because if long exposure or like really loud sounds pretty much like you hear like a ringing noise that comes off a sudden and uh like gets louder and then fades away or something like that yeah definitely developed that from all my loud exhaust and whatnot uh so yeah let me tell you what we're doing we are going back to the dealership that i bought this motorcycle from uh, I told you guys in that video that like, hey, if you want me to ride certain bikes, let me know. And they had an RC8 uh, available for sale that you guys can buy. I've never been a huge fan of KTM, mainly just because of the way they look, to be honest. But they're very unique. You guys know me. I like unique bikes in general. So, you know, uh, that's exactly what we're doing. I'm going to the dealership right now to test ride it, see how it is. I don't know the streets around here or anything, so like we'll probably take it just around here, hopefully like rip up these streets, like those turns, maybe go further down, you know, like figure out places that's not like too far. I'm, I'm not as familiar with the area, so I don't want to like be putting on like miles on their bike and ride on unfamiliar roads and whatnot, so carbon wheels gotta try to avoid most of these potholes i mean obviously i think i mean hopefully nothing's gonna happen from these like low speed potholes doctor the ride was very peaceful with the earplugs okay. how are you doing did you install the the tst the, yeah was it easy to do uh yeah it was actually like pretty easy it just it caught me off guard because usually i'm using the to the nrcs and whatnot yeah. and it's just like a one piece uh -huh. But this one came because there's this piece that closes this off and then there's uh, two separate pieces and the separate pieces are like not attached yeah. so you can fit it through the this. This looks good and with the contrast. I yeah. The and then you have the mount here. How are you doing, bro? Yeah. Yeah, I got the low mount and everything, so. And then I saw you added this for your OCD. Yeah, I did. <laughs> $250 for that. No fucking way, really? Yeah, just for like one side. I was like, God damn. M parts. M parts, yeah, exactly. Yeah, the spools, I added radiator guards. Were they hard to install the lights? Nah, not, not really. Probably like 30 ish minutes. Okay. Did you have to solder anything or was it plug and play? No, uh, plug and play. It just, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, they gave me connections. It just was not connected to the like main connector. Yeah. So you have to like put the cables together pretty much, like line them up. There's three of them. And then they give you like, uh, what is it? It's like a heat shrinking thing. Mm -hmm. So you just pretty much. Yeah, it's easy. Not that hard. Ooh, that's the bike. Yeah, I said in the video when I was buying the M. Yeah. And everyone was like, yeah, you should ride it. It's a really cool, unique bike. And I was like, all right. No, it's definitely like super unique bike. 175 horsepower. KTM discontinued it because the CEO said it's too dangerous for the streets. But then they make this Super Duke R. So what? it's like, what are you talking about? But it's like one of the most powerful uh, v2 engines on there so you'll feel it wait so this is like a v2 yeah. 175 horsepower uh yeah yeah damn and that's their like most powerful this super sport their most powerful one I've okay yeah. oh i guess i'm supposed to like let it whoa fault in the engine control that's new Whatever that is. Huh. This bike throws a lot of codes. Um, yeah. I don't know what happened, but I have no throttle. Okay, hold on a sec. Let's figure this out first. It's 
fine now. That was very weird. If anybody knows why, how this would happen, let me know in the comments. There's another one. You guys have two of them? <laughs> okay. Thank you. Whoa, this is so weird. <laughs> See, kind of? Yeah, that like, like the, the H2, how it, how it, like, you know, how it has that little thing that holds you back? Yeah, like, that's I got it. For, I don't know. Makes sense. I wonder if it's that torquey. Yeah. It's really torquey though. So, so what year is this one? This one, I believe, is a 15. 15, yeah, okay. Yeah, this is really clean. Yeah, super clean. I'm wearing earplugs. I'm going to take off one side just because I want to hear it better. Because yeah. that is a unique engine. You hear so much better. <laughs> All right, right there. We'll do. We'll try. Actually, we'll do. Not try. Because it's not my bike. Usually, I say we'll try, but... I will ride safe because it ain't my bike. I break it, I buy it, but I don't want to buy it to be honest. <laughs> but yeah, huge shout out to Mali Motorsports. I hope I'm saying it right. I'm gonna ask him later on if I'm saying the uh, name of the place right. But because you know you pronounce things differently. That nice R1M over here. This one looks clean. I like. I know the levers are really cheap, but. I like how they're matching. Oh my god, and he has like a eBay exhaust on it. Dude, it's an R1M. Come on. All right, all right. That's not the topic. Whoa, train. Chill. Let's do the first startup. For sure this yep, stock exhaust. I see the cat and whatnot. Is it Am I supposed to like completely turn on? There's Oh. See, like for 2015 Mike this is very, very outdated, but it's unique. Let's do that again. It's kind of cool. Oh, I was like pressing this. <laughs> Interesting. It dead ass kind of sounds like a 300 or something like that. <laughs> or a 400. I'm pretty sure it won't when you get on it, but for now. How did they end up pushing 175 horsepower from two cylinders on a bike engine? That's crazy. I guess they said it's the most powerful two cylinder. So they got Brembo's and everything. I've heard a lot of things that these are really good track bikes. So that tail light is like full-on alien style like it's it looks like an older version of the r1 the r1 has like the same like style but it's cleaner but this one's like it's like uh what, what are those called like the paper things you make like origami or something like that <laughs> the design is very like different but like i feel like that's what makes it cool oh god i just realized it's regular shifting this is gonna be interesting. Whoa, those mirrors. That's very interesting. Just the angle of it is like, like the way it mounts, it mounts from the inside, not the outside. Let it warm up to 115. Well, I usually let my bikes warm up to about 130-ish. It's nice that it has that. So that's one thing about the BMW. Like, it doesn't have a uh, temp display, like, right there. I, that is something that I want to see, like, all the time because I like monitoring my bike temperature to see how it rides and all. Right from the start, the seat right here is a little stiff. Like, you feel a lot of pressure right here. But it feels kind of upright. It's, oh, I almost went to second. Whoa. Clutch releases. What the where is that clutch release? Okay. I feel like a newbie. I wonder if this is a stock bike. This is very weird. It's definitely giving me like... Okay, let's go this way first. my god it doesn't have a quick shifter i don't remember the last time i didn't ride with a quick shifter like not even up i was like 
up down maybe but like not even up wow look at this throwback to the only the ogs have seen me use my hand to shift because almost all my what the hell did i just press on hold on hold on hold on i'm trying to go back to the main menu what did, where did i go what is this lap lap time no i don't want a lap time Okay, okay. Oh, I guess this is like the main one. Oh, <laughs> low fuel. <laughs> okay, we have to find a gas station, like right now. Regular shifting, first gear. I really don't like that clutch release. Like, is. I say that about my Ducati, but this one is like weirdly far. It does feel good around the corners. Now I'm like trying to rev match and whatnot. This is there has to be yeah gas station right there. Oh. She's dorky, but I definitely feel a power difference between this and the older ones and yeah i don't think this bike has any like electronics it's just raw because i felt a lot of like fish tailing from that just regular downshift gee homie it's not that hard finding neutral on it i was looking for those little details you know so the bmw the nice thing about that bike is that it's very uh what can i say it's very like easy to ride it doesn't have too many like like quirky features like this one you know the clutch release and the weird like look at that it's way too sensitive and look at that it revs only like to like 10,000 rpm that's crazy so yeah it's definitely a very different bike over revving the hell out of it not too bad oh there is one right here too we're already committed to this side I'd rather do shell but we're already here oh that's weird I saw KTM and I was like well what and I was like yeah right a KTM I've never been on a KTM this is my first time so I respect the uniqueness definitely boy 6.3 all right full tank 21 dollars 3.3 gallons not too bad so this is full full and I think it, oh no the light just came on so it probably is a 4.5 gallon tank I'm assuming <laughs> that dash is so old school but it's kind of cool I like how it like goes up and down and all the weird digital numbers but come on for a 2015 bike like see so here you guys should compare this bike to my R1M because they're the same years or my Ninja H2 I just filled you up. What do you mean low fuel? Okay, slightly getting used to the weirdo clutch and the throttle. It's just very different from other bikes. I wanna go back out on other streets here. Whoa, slippery. I don't know what tires these are, but they don't feel the most grippy. It's very like not smooth, <laughs> the throttle. Oh, I popped it in neutral. Yeah, jerky. But, like, that could be kind of fun. Pick a side. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Nah, I, I do not know where I'm going. This is like a pin. Why does it still say low fuel? I literally just filled it up. Does not feel that stable. It feels good going into the turn, but... All 
I gotta be careful just because this bike has absolutely no electronics. This is actually not too bad of a road. The brakes are a little mushy, like they don't have as much bite, but they feel pretty solid. Like they're they're smooth. Yeah, I don't know why it's still saying low fuel. I probably will cut my ride even shorter just because of that. But <laughs> very wobbly. cool though look at the like fairings that's different oh popped into neutral oh, bumpy 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 now that I'm like thinking more about the ride like I'm trying to just ride the bike I'm forgetting about the regular shifting versus GP shift As soon as I do like full pin on her, she's just wobbly. I kind of miss like shifting myself. It adds more to the experience of riding. It feels like a heavy bike, but it goes into the turns. Like, I mean, it's, it's so hard for me to compare right now just because I was riding my M1000, which is, you know, like a brand new 2022 top of the line BMW bike, which obviously you can compare that to a KTM, but I'm trying to be just like, you know, just thinking about this bike and I'm like, so you feel go like you're going fast on it, but you're really not. Like I thought I was going way faster than the speed that I was going just right now. But I look down, I'm like, oh, we're only doing this speed? So it's like, I think because it's like more of a raw, you know, experience. That may be why. Chain radius on it feels a little weird. Like the geometry. Oh, look at that. I'm like trying to turn and I hit like my hand to the mirror. Some design flaws. <laughs> I tried downshifting instead. <laughs> Very torquey, like on the throttle. I wouldn't even call that torquey, it's just throttle response is too sensitive. Haha. <laughs> yeah, you guys see that? I tried giving it like a lot of like rear brake to like slide it a little bit and it just slides super easy. I don't know if I like it. It's definitely unique. You know what I mean? It's very different, but like for a 2015 bike, like compare that to my R1M, yeah. you know, like same year, I'm like, this is missing a lot of electronics. And this is my first time in a while, like no upshift, downshift, no electronics, just raw, which is fun. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like, I feel like I'm going fast and I look down, I'm like, oh, I'm only doing this speed. Yeah, yeah, that's what it does. Yeah, it, it's weird. Yeah, it's it's not like torque because I went full pin on it uh -huh. and it wasn't picking up But down low like throttle response is high yeah. But as soon as you like when you're going and you get on it, it takes a while yeah, But yeah, yeah, you, yeah. I mean the power difference plus I was riding the M1000 so it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but it definitely like I see the appeal to it. It's just you know like KTM should have done more, you know, like I feel like it's missing a lot yeah. but it's very like unique is very like 
I haven't ridden a leader bike like this, you know, it's so different from everything else. So I guess that's the appeal, like if you want to be like one of a kind. And I like the, so going into a turn, it feels good, but when you're in the turn, it kind of like, really? yeah, it's, it's a little more squirrely than like my other bikes, you know? Yeah, but yeah, it's definitely cool. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> this bike just makes me want to like slide it. <laughs> Should be extra careful. We just went on water and now we're going on the super soft surface with a bike with absolutely no electronics. <laughs> I don't know about this one, sir. I don't know about this one. It's cool. It ain't me. Yeah. 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 There's a few. Like, look. I tried the ZH2. I tried the Street Fighter. All amazing bikes. It just ain't me. This one is cool. Like, I. Yeah, I, I see myself owning a KTM. They're really nice bikes, but. Yeah. It's like definitely like a niche bike. Exactly. It's very like. So that probably is somewhat like. It's similar, but like more more popular than this. But, like, I see the point of Aprilia, you know, like, they have the sound, they have the crazy performance, it's the most powerful... Yeah, it, it has, like, yeah, it has everything, and like, so, the Aprilia, I understand, with this one, it's, like, 175 horsepower these days for a leader bike, like, that's, that's pretty much V2 numbers, you know what I mean? A little bit more. so back in 2012, it was, like, holy shit, Yeah, I guess back in the day, but, like, see, my R1 is... 2015 and makes 200 horsepower so it's like or is it 195 i don't want stock is like 197 but what the tune and stuff like that you get over yeah that's that definitely over 200 i'm talking like stock yeah stock about 200. 200 and you definitely feel the difference it's just it's different it's unique but it's fun like because there's no electronics so like forces you to like i guess enjoy it more yeah, you know exactly so but like looking at it, it looks newer than the tech and all that. Like my first time ever riding an Aprilia, I was like, whoa. Like I was never an Aprilia fan. It was kind of like this, you know. I was like, oh, like yeah, I've heard, I, I, it, it sounds cool. You know what I mean? The Aprilia, that's that's all I cared about. Like yeah, they sound cool. They look kind of eh. Like they're not like, you know, pretty. They, they You can't compare an Aprilia to like this or the V4R or any V4. You know, it just doesn't compare. The H2 is on its own league. Everything about it is cool. And then I rode the Aprilia and I was like, oh okay like i i see the appeal with this one it felt a little more like that ktm needs to step up their game pretty much you know i mean i get it it's like an older bike and whatnot but as you said you i think stuff, like they're super dukes i think yeah away. probably we get one I, we have a couple of people i want to try once we get one in yeah. Back and then all right like, i definitely want to do that I, ktm needs to redeem themselves i'm not shitting on this bike but like I'm just, I can't compare it to like the other leader bikes because that's what I'm doing, you know? And I'm not comparing it to like the top top, but like in comparison to yeah, even. To like R1 exactly. Like my R1 is the exact same year. I'm like, yo, there's night and day difference. Like if someone picks this over an R1 or. How much is it brand new? Brand new MSRP? I don't remember. I think it was around. What is it? I think it was 22 or no? Because I'm trying to see, is it like the same price as an... It's the same price as a regular R1. It's not R1M category. Okay, okay. That's why I was trying to figure it out. Okay, so... What's MSRP? MSRP is actually 165. 16.5, yeah, so out the door so, with all the... So, it's an R1. Like 20, 000, you're at R1. Price. Yeah, so it's an R1 price. Yeah. So I guess, like, the difference is, if you want, like, a bike that's a good, a better bike, go for the R1. If you want to be unique, go for that, because it's... It's that's the thing yeah. like if i had extra extra money then i'd prob probably just get this and just let it chill in the garage or i need the honda fireblade yeah so yeah so that's probably next don't don't get it anytime soon please because that's what happened with this one I was like yeah i'll come by we'll just see what happens and this happened yeah. so don't get don't get a fireblade anytime soon so i'm not like yeah, I'll come look at it. We'll, we'll, wait, give you, we'll give you a little breather and wait a couple months. Yeah, yeah. Boom. There you go. That, that's a good plan. I like that. But I, I've always told people, unless it's a Turbo Busa, I don't know, man. But these, these I'm, I'm actually like, it's more f something that I would get over that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, I'm pretty sure you know back in the day the Jixers was what everyone wrote. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they definitely have history. Like, Jixer... They don't have the, the street... Like, everyone wants an R1 over a Jixer yeah. 1000. But these GSXR 1000s are... It's it's really impressive. When I wrote it, I was like, holy shit. Like, yeah. I heard that they make a lot of power. Like, them and the ZX10s yeah. are up there, like, for Japanese bikes. Yeah. And so... Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Let me guys, let, let me got, let me guys know. Yeah. This, this is my brain right now. Let me know <laughs> in the comments if you guys want me to ride one of these. I know I've had a lot of requests because they're like, try a Jixer, get a Jixer. I'm like, mm, if it's a Turbo Busa, sure. But I'd be down to try out like one of their newer, I guess, leader bikes. That'd be interesting. All right, I'm gonna take this off because I'm like drenched in sweat right now. It, it got so much hotter. But thank you again for letting me ride this. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did. Subscribe and let me know what other bikes you guys want me to ride. Catch you guys on the next one. Peace out, ride safe.